So what you want to serve this with, typically I do steamed rice, but you can totally do bread as well, just like a normal hummus. It's freaking amazing. Hi people, it's Mandy again with Foo52. Another day, another recipe from my cookbook, The Art of Escapism Cooking. Today I'm going to show you a recipe on page 288. And it's called Mapo Tofumis. Let's talk about tofu a little bit. Most people would not say that they're eating tofu purely for its robust flavor, okay? Tofu is a texture thing. And most people, like most Asian at least, um, we love tofu mainly for its texture. With the most famous dish of tofu, I suppose, is Mapo Tofu. So mapo tofu is basically tofu cooked in a um, spicy um, numbing sauce and the numbness comes from the, the Sichuan peppercorn, okay? So in this recipe, I'm kind of giving it a new adaptation. I feel like, um, I personally, I think I love it even more than the original mapo tofu. And what I did is I turned tofu into a puree. So. That's why there's where the tofumus comes from, okay? Drawing from like hummus. Also, obviously, this is not a hummus, it's a tofumus. There are two components in this recipe, right? There's the tofumus and there's the mapo sauce. Both can be made the day ahead of time, which makes this a great dish for entertaining, okay? So here I have tofu. And again, tofu, like I said, tofu is a texture thing, okay? And it only makes sense that it comes in many, many different textures for you to choose from. And mainly it goes from silken to soft to firm. And today we're going to use the firm kind, okay? So the firmer your tofu is, here you can see that I am, uh, I don't even see, okay, there. Um, so you can see that this is a very firm tofu because usually silken tofu, there will be no holes like this in the tofu, it would just be like completely smooth texture, okay? So this tells you that it's a firm tofu. And the firmer the tofu is, the obviously the thicker your tofu is, is going to be. Usually tofu comes like in boxes that still submerged in kind of some kind of a liquid or water. So drain that completely and then even, and then actually just like, like squeeze it dry with a dry towel and clean dry towel just to make sure that you get rid of all the excess moisture. To season this tofu, this tofu mess or whatever you want to call it, um, you need a, can you see that? You need kind of a sub recipe from the book, which I call the garlic confit puree. You can puree the tofu in your food processor. There's no problem. My preferred method um, nowadays is to use a immersion blender with the, the cup that it comes with. Just because um, I think it gives me a smoother puree of the tofu, but you know, food processor to totally fine. No problem at all, okay? So what I do is I just dump the tofu in break it up into like large pieces and whatnot, okay? Then I'm adding the, the garlic that I just showed you, the um, caramelized garlic. And then I'll need to add one and a half teaspoon of ses toasted sesame oil. And a heavy pinch of salt. Remember, you don't, you don't want this um, tofu must to be too salty because the flavor of the dish is going to come from that really intense, really robust um, mapo sauce. And the tofu um, puree, the tofu must, is really acting as a cooling and a flavor contrast. So you don't want to season it too much, okay? So really simple here, immersion blender or food processor, whatever, okay? All you have to do is puree it. And in the beginning, it's going to look a bit like grainy and not smooth and silky. Don't worry, just keep going and it will. It will become smooth. Okay, 
So this is what it's supposed to look like. You can see it's nice and shiny and smooth. So this is how, how, how you want to do. So it's going to take like several minutes. So be patient with it. Now I'm going to transfer this whole thing into the fridge and let it actually get chilled a little bit because like I said, tofu, um, the, 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 the function of this tofu mess, um, it's really to provide contrast to, to the robust mapo sauce and not just contrast by texture, but contrast in temperature as well. I want this sauce to be not like super cold, but I want it to be cooling, you know? Okay. And after all the puree and the friction, it's going to warm up the puree a little bit. So I'm going to just pop it in the fridge to let it sit while I make the mapo sauce. Okay. Now we're ready to make the mapo sauce and in order to do that, I need to talk a little bit about just a few ingredients that you may not be familiar with, but is absolutely crucial to this dish. Cannot skip them, okay? First thing is douban paste. Douban means broad bean paste, okay? Broad bean chili paste. It has a such intense chili aroma and flavor and all that um, umami that comes from the fermentation it's basically the backbone kind of w w of like a lot of Sichuan dishes so if you're a big fan of Sichuan cuisine you have to get familiar with this paste I would really 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 recommend buying a brand that actually is made in Sichuan okay they're like Taiwanese brand and I'm from Taiwan, but no offense, they're not very authentic. Taiwanese brand and the worst kind, I am sorry, I apologize to all the Hong Kong Cantonese people, but the Hong Kong type, like especially made by Li Jingji, which is a huge sauce company in Hong Kong, don't, don't buy that one, okay, please. Because that one is so toned down, so lacking in flavor, that you're just, if you use that one to make this dish, you're just being you know, like, what the hell? You know, this is not, nothing satisfying. So don't go there. Don't buy anything that is made outside of Sichuan. The next thing ingredient that you may not be familiar with is um, these like little black, fermented black beans. And they're called doshi, okay? So, this is fine, you can have substitute with this one, especially because we're using such a small amount. And it basically adds a savoriness. It adds another layer of fermentation and savoriness to the dish. But if you don't have this and you don't, you're not familiar with it, you know, you um, can't find it or unwilling to find it, you can substitute it with super dark miso paste. Next thing, this thing is not really an exotic ingredients anymore at nowadays it's basically Sichuan peppercorns okay that's ground you cannot substitute Sichuan peppercorn with any other types of peppercorn it is not the same thing okay because it provides that tingling sensation that is basically in the name of the dish which is ma okay so not you cannot make the dish without this the next thing is um, mushroom powder. This is very easy, okay? Just buy any dried mushrooms. In my, in my, I usually do dry shiitake because they are the cheapest and most common kind everywhere you go. What I do is I just put them in the fr freezer, not fridge, freezer, and then that is, the freezer is gonna do the job of basically draw out all the excess moisture. And every time, it you will be able to get a very fine grind like this. Now we can get to the making of the sauce part. First thing, I have my canola oil plus toasted sesame oil in the pot already. And here I've ground pork with more sesame oil and uh, cornstarch or potato starch or tapioca starch, whatever starch works, okay? And I'm just going to mix that in. I'm not going to season the pork because the sauce itself is going to be plenty salty. Okay, and the starch is important because not only it kind of um, refined the texture of the ground pork, makes it smoother sort of, um, it also thickens the sauce, okay? So mix, 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 mix. Set that aside, okay, and I'm gonna start on medium 
maybe like medium to medium high, medium, medium high, doesn't really matter, okay? And I'm just gonna let this heat up. Once the oil is hot, I can add my ground pork. So you wanna really brown the meat well, okay? I think most people when they're making recipes that requires browning meat, they don't go far enough. And it's, that process is important to develop or de develop the layering of textures. No, I mean layering of flavors. And also textures, really, because um, you want that little crispy bits and pieces. So really use the back of your wooden spoon to like separate the meat. I don't want large chunks of meat. I want it to be almost like a ragu kind of a sauce instead of like large chunks of meat. Now it's time to add the doban chili paste, the fermented black bean, and the mushroom powder. This next step is also important that you really let the chili paste release its flavor and get browned in the oil as well. Because the oil is basically um, a really, just like if you have ever um, had hummus before, that large pool of olive oil on top is is really a lot of where the flavor comes from. And same here, okay? We wanna create a really flavorful red chili oil. That's another um, step I feel like people don't go far enough when they're, when they're cooking, is that when it requires uh, like any types of paste, like curry paste, chili paste, or gochujang paste, or whatever, okay? Browning the paste really, really helps accentuate um, the flavor that you're looking for from the paste. So now that all the moisture, all the moisture from the chili paste has been cooked out and the chili paste has becoming like, you know, these like little blackened pieces, not blackened, I mean, just like little maroon, dark red color, you know, in the oil, then that's ready, okay? I'm going to add my garlic, grated garlic, ginger, and then um, the Sichuan peppercorn and the ground cumin in here. And as well as, I'm going to take this off heat just a little bit because I want to talk a bit about um, chili flakes, okay? So the purpose of the chili paste is not really to add heat. It's not that spicy. The heat is going to come from the, the chili powder. So depending on your tolerance or your preference, um, you can see that I'm a bit, you know, heat lover. So I'm adding almost like a tablespoon in here. But if you don't, if you can't handle heat, you can totally tone that down a little bit, okay? So I'm going to just cook this just for a minute more. Now I'm ready to add liquid. Two tablespoons of Shaoxing wine, which is a cooking wine, a yellow cooking wine. If you don't have it, you can use sake. Sometimes people say that you can use sherry wine to substitute it. I, I've never tried it, but you know, maybe you could you could try that as well. So once the alcohol has evaporated, I am going to add a quarter cup of chicken stock. And I'm gonna turn the heat down just a bit. Quarter cup of chicken stock. And this may sound weird, but I'm adding apricot jam because um, in a lot of Asian dishes, um, there's a balance between sweetness and saltiness. And instead of using sugar, I'm using jam just because it's such a small amount, you're not actually gonna be like, oh, I'm eating apricot jam. But um, it adds, I feel like it, it brings another layer of like undertone a fruitiness to, to the dish instead of just sugar, which is just sweet. And very important, ground white pepper. And this part sounds weird. This is just white distilled vinegar, okay? And 
this is probably one of the greatest tips I've learned from all the master chefs out there. And in this particular case, I'm talking about Thomas Keller. Okay, I've read it somewhere in his book that um, in any savory dishes, even if just one drop of vinegar, like even in dishes that you're not trying to create a tanginess, even just like one drop of vinegar is going to brighten up the whole dish. It's going to sharpen it, kind of like you know chisel the edges and then like kind of wake up the whole dish. And I've been practicing that ever since, and it is so true. So here I'm going to add, again, you don't want the sauce to be sour. This is not a tangy sauce, okay? But just five drops of vinegar is going to make, make the dish a lot more complex than if you don't. It's weird, it's kind of like magic, okay? So now I'm going to reduce the sauce by about half. Once the sauce is reduced down, it should look something like this. Like I said, it's almost like a ragu, but it's like ragu from hell in a very good way. <laughs> and all these super dark oil. If your oil is like a light red, there's some you're not there's something that you didn't properly execute. Okay, it should be dark rouge red like this. And I'm just going to scrape all my tofu puree onto the serving dish, the bowl. And I've been trying to perfect that beautiful hummus swirl <laughs> that you see in really high-end or you know you see in Israel or you know that is properly it has this beautiful basin I've been trying to perfect that for a while I can't say I'm a master at it yet but this is my best attempt I basically just make a mount like this you know I smooth it I smooth it out smooth the surface out and then I just basically push Push the the you know I put my my spoon here in the center and I just like turn the the plate so the spoon is going to basically create a basin in the middle of the hummus like that okay isn't that cool now very very straightforward. You're just going to do that. You want the sauce to be kind of concentrated in the center basin that you created. And then last but not least, you wanna drizzle that oil on the side. Then in the end, this is also quite important. You want to dust just a little bit extra of that ground Sichuan peppercorn. What this does is going to make every bite a little bit different from the last and as well as chili flakes. More chili flakes. And there. Oh, I forgot. A little bit of A little bit of chopped, finely chopped scallion. Not too much, just a bit. And there you have it. Mapo tofumis. Like I said, I like this, dare I say, even more than the original Mapo tofu recipe. Because there is even more contrast between textures that smooth silky tofu and that fiery numbing hot mapo sauce i'm very excited about this because i already know it's gonna be awesome <laughs> there mapo tofu mist okay so what you want to serve this with typically i do steamed rice but you can totally do bread as well just like a normal hummus
it's freaking amazing. <coughs> oh, that packs a punch, which is just the way I like it. This is better than the original Mapo Tofu. There, I said it, it's on the record, period, okay? Not only it creates a much better contrast in texture, but that contrast in temperature, which you don't get from traditional Mapo Tofu dish where the tofu is cooked inside the Mapo sauce, is the contrast of temperature. Where you feel the pain from the Mapo sauce, the cool silky tofu puree comes in the rescue. So you have this constant like pain and then, and then comfort and then pain and then comfort happening in your mouth. And then the numbingness from the Sichuan peppercorn is so crucial in this recipe. It makes everything so much more interesting. Mm. Thank you for watching. This is me showing you how to make one of my favorite recipes in my cookbook. Try it, tell me if you love it. Again, please, please, please do the work, okay? Don't skip over ingredients. Source them properly. Make sure you get the best um, dou ban jiang. You made the, the broth bean paste. You get the best chili flakes. You get the best Sichuan peppercorn. And if you do all that, I guarantee you, you will not be disappointed. So thanks for watching. I'll see you again next time. I'm just gonna have to enjoy this all by myself.